and we're back like we never left Oregon fans what's going on how we living thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the ducks dish podcast I'm your host Max Torres with scoop duck on three coming to you from Long Beach California it's Tuesday May 21st 2024 and I'll be joined by my guy Justin Hopkins for another episode of the scoop duck daily but before we get into that the ducks dish podcast is brought to you in part by ranchito grill out in springfield not sure what your dinner plans are tonight but head on over to ranchito at 1537 mohawk boulevard they uh they got great food great environment and they have some awesome homemade tortillas that you gotta try out head on over to ranchito they will take care of you say what's up to my guy ruben and let him know that max torres sent you like I said, joined today by Scoop Duck owner and publisher Justin Hopkins for another edition of the Scoop Duck Daily. J-Hop, how are we doing, man? Good to see you. Good. Living good. Had a good weekend. Had some good food. Played a little golf. You know, just living the dream. There you go. There you go. Glad uh, glad it was a good weekend for you. Um, man, it was a big weekend of recruiting for the Ducks, and uh, a lot has happened since you and I last hopped on here, so... We're going to hop into one of the, the major storylines to just touch on it briefly here to start off the show. Five-star wide receiver to Corey Moore out of Duncanville High School, uh, perhaps finally uh, or you know eventually decommitted from the LSU Tigers. And, and this is a, a big development for Oregon, of course. Yeah, it felt like this was imminent. I mean, I guess is kind of how I looked at it. So, you know, when the news broke, it wasn't all that surprising. You know, his June's lined up with official visits to multiple schools, including Oregon. Uh, you know, you've got the Texas insider saying Texas is deep in his recruitment. The Ohio State guy saying that Ohio State's deep in his recruitment in Oregon. So, you know, I feel like, I mean, I would say this if it was, you know, Oregon. It just felt like maybe the right thing to do for DeCorian Moore, decommit. If he wants to continue considering LSU, you know, obviously that's his choice. But, you know, you're definitely considering these other schools. Why not just kind of enter this, you know, key June with an open mind and, uh, you know, see where that takes you. So, uh, you know, nothing's changed for me. I, this doesn't change anything about where Oregon is in his recruitment for me. They were recruiting him, you know, at a high level while he was committed. There's no doubt that they're going to continue recruiting him at that level now that he's decommitted. And, uh, you know, I don't think this means he's imminently committing to the Ducks, but, you know, Oregon obviously loves this development. And, uh, you know, as I've said for a long time now, Duck fans should keep, you know, keep tabs on DeCorey and more. I think if nothing else, Justin, this feels like it's, uh, well, at least you're one step closer uh, to him choosing the Ducks if you're looking at it from that perspective. But, yeah, it felt like this was kind of something that was coming uh, he took visits out to Oregon and, and Ohio State and, of course, the in-state Texas Longhorns. So they're the the school that, of course, is looming large since he is from Texas. Um, but now the, the development that we've kind of seen come out of this is that he's going to be taking three official visits starting at the end of this month with his first to Ohio State on May 31st, then over to Texas on June 14th, and then uh, presumably – if this is his third and final official visit out to Oregon on June 21st, but we'll have to see if that ultimately is his final official visit. But uh, at the very least, Justin, I think that it's it's good for Oregon. It bodes well for Oregon to, to get the third of these three uh, slated official visits uh, coming uh, over the course of the next month or so. No question. Absolutely no question that being last is best when it comes to official visits. Um, so you've got to like that development probably even more than the decommitment for Oregon. Um, and, you know, let's be real, you know, and this could be the final thought, but I mean, if he commits to Oregon or Texas, wherever he commits to, I mean, those other schools aren't going to give up. I mean, even if he ends up committing to Texas or whatever, uh, you know, Oregon is certainly not going to give up. So, um, you know, yeah, you want him, you want to get him if he commits in July or whatever the case might be, which he hasn't set any form of a date. Uh, you know, you just know that these other schools are not going to go away quietly just because he made a second commitment. So couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, Oregon's going to stay in the picture, even if it uh, isn't Oregon. And that goes for every other school. And we know, of course, that Oregon is looming large for Keelan Russell, uh, his teammate over at Duncanville 2025 quarterback currently committed to SMU. How long will he be committed to SMU? I'm not too sure. That's why we have to follow these recruiting developments. And, and that's why Justin and I are here to cover all of it. So 
Uh, we're coming to you guys on the Scoop Duck YouTube channel. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. The channel's been seeing some awesome growth, and that's a, a big thank you to you guys for supporting what Justin and I do, covering Oregon football and recruiting at the highest level that we possibly can. Justin, it was a big weekend out in Eugene. Lots of big-time recruits uh, made their way out for unofficial visits. I don't think any anybody started official visits just quite yet with Oregon. And uh, let's start things off with one of your favorite recruits in the 2025 class. That's uh, Galveston, Texas, ball safety, Jonah Williams, who was back in Eugene for another trip. And, and it sounds like this one just really helped solidify Oregon standing. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, if we're being honest, entering this visit, you know, I'm not sure that Oregon was necessarily in his top three. And if they were, they were definitely number three. Um, and that's at best. So I, I think that this was an opportunity for Oregon to inch up the list. You know, Williams hasn't really given any indication when he'll make a commitment. Um, you know, obviously you've got distance to overcome. You know, Oregon did a great job getting several Texas guys on campus this weekend, including Williams. So maybe kind of forming that, you know, Texas brotherhood, if you will, a little bit. Um, but I mean, with regards to Williams, I think the visit went as good as, as it could have. Um, you know, the reports that I got from internally at Oregon were very positive about, hey, we made a move here. You know, yeah, you know, we're not the team to beat, but we made a move that, to put us in, you know, better contention for Williams. And and just for me, you know, watching his film, you know, Lanning's defense and just kind of what they want to do. I mean, this is a guy that is as good as they come. I mean, hell of an athlete, you know, can run, can do all those things. Great instincts, um, you know, maybe a slightly, I don't want to say oversized, but a slightly oversized safety, definitely an undersized linebacker. Um, but I do think that that's something that they like in their defense. One of those guys that can move around and and still be able to make plays. So um, he's not a liability in the pass game uh, at all in the secondary. So just to me, this guy is like a total package um, and, and I think would be a, a day one difference maker in the defense. This is an absolutely elite athlete in every sense of the word, Justin. Three sport athlete, football, baseball, also runs track. Um He's been one of the more intriguing recruits to, to follow on Oregon's board here in the 2025 class. Um, we do have a, a visit recap story with uh, some quotes that I was able to get from Jonah Williams over on Scoop Duck right now. So give that one a read if you haven't and a reminder to try us out for just a dollar over at scoopduck.com. And uh, he was really telling me that uh, Coach Hampton, Chris Hampton, was a big part of why this visit was a big success for him said he was a great coach and an even better man, and he loved the hospitality that he was shown. That's typically the case, but also the development. The development factor for Oregon is a big piece here for Williams, and, and the Ducks just sent – excuse me. Still getting over a cold, so apologies, but the Ducks are sending guys to the league in a big way. So I think that Oregon is going to continue to be a contender here with Jonah Williams. And I think Justin, I can get your thoughts here. I think they end up with one of Jonah Williams, Trey McNutt or Fahim Delaney. And I think you really have to, if you want to get that safety room heading in the right direction. Yeah. I think between those three, you're targeting one. Um, if you can, you know, maybe get a second guy out of that group, uh, potentially you're in elite status for sure. But yeah, I, I think this is definitely going to be a quality over quantity type group at safety for Oregon. I know folks, I'll just say it. People will ask about DJ Pickett. I think o Oregon views him a little bit more of a corner than a safety. Probably why Max didn't mention him, but yeah, of course, if you can get DJ Pickett, you know, you can, you know, that'd be another good one too. And um, it's maybe just the last note here on Jonah Williams, seeing that he's another Texas guy. I mean, Oregon's really trying to set up, set up shop in the Lone Star state and then adding a guy like Rashad samples, certainly only helps your uh, chances to, to do just that. Rolling right along, staying on defense, Justin, let's talk about another one of Oregon's big visitors, Trajan Odom, 2025 defensive lineman out of the state of North Carolina. He made the trip out to Oregon, another unofficial visit for Odom, by himself. When I was talking to him, this is actually the first interview I think I've ever done on a plane. So um, I don't know how that worked, but when I was talking to Odom, he said, oh yeah, I'm on the plane right now. So just trying to get that interview as soon as I possibly could. But I think Oregon definitely made a move for Odom. And, and I think that they've really kind of been near the, the top for him for quite some time. And he's one of their premier defensive line targets uh, in this class. 
and it sounds like he's going to try to come off the board within the next month or so. And I think you got to have Oregon, USC at the forefront there. And then Ohio State is looming large as well with the with the weekend visit coming up for him. But he continues to love what Oregon shows him. Great relationships with Tuioti, Lanning, Tosh. And if it comes down to Oregon and USC, Justin, I, I don't really see Oregon losing. Yeah, it would be a it would be a shocker. It'd be kind of one of the first recruiting battles Oregon loses to USC. The reason I could see it happening is first of all, you know, uh, USC is obviously doing a great job recruiting defensive line this year with the the new addition of Coach Anderson. But uh, also, you know, he's lived in the LA area, so that's you know some some an area that he knows. Maybe he's wanting to get back to it. You never know, and and you can't blame him for you know loving palm trees and beaches and stuff like that if that's if that's what he wants, but. If he's going to make a business decision, if he's going to make a serious decision about his future, and like he says he is, you're going to look at the development at Oregon. You're going to look at the fact you've got multiple defensive line coaches. You've got a defensive-minded head coach. And you've got a program that's trending much closer to a national championship than USC currently is. So that's really going to be the rub. Like, which which way is this young man going to go? Is he going to lean towards – and I'm not picking on USC, but it's pretty obvious that's the difference between these two programs right now. Um, you know, and I feel like that's the battle. I think Ohio State's kind of lurking, but I think this is really Oregon uh, versus USC. Like you said, nine out of 10 times, we're probably going to bet on Oregon, especially with a defensive recruit. Uh, but I do think this one's really close uh, and, and we'll just have to see what happens over the next month. Chad Simmons uh, over at On3 also had an update with Odom and went out to go see him in North Carolina. And I think he mentioned Georgia and uh, UCLA and Auburn as a couple other ones to, to keep an eye on in this recruitment. So just wanted to throw a mention for, for those in there as well. But it feels like he wants to come back home, you know, come back West uh, for his college football. And, and I think that that obviously sets up pretty well for the Ducks. And uh, they'll get an official visit next month, it looks like, for Odom. And uh, that'll be something that I think tells us a lot about where they ultimately stand. And then he'll be able to kind of make a decision from there. So Horkin's been signing some really, really talented guys along the defensive line in the past couple cycles. And I think that they did a great job of being one of the earlier uh, offers for Odom. So we'll continue to track this recruitment, but I, I feel really good, Justin. And I think you do too about Oregon's chances as we record this right now in, in late May, but Trajan Odom, definitely a name you got to know. I think the Ducks are in a great spot there following another visit out to Eugene. And then uh, before I get another coughing fit, let's talk about Michael Terry, who was in town from San Antonio, Justin. Yeah, I mean, again, we talked about Jonah Williams being an elite athlete. Uh, he's on the defensive side of the ball. Michael Terry is also an elite athlete on the offensive side of the ball this time. So, you know, as we've talked about before, he's that hybrid wide receiver tight end, just a unique individual um, with that skill set and something that, you know, Will Stein would probably love to have in his offense, um, just that versatility and the things you could do there. But uh, again, like I said, with Williams, I, I think Terry uh, is a guy that has liked Oregon, has had him in his top five, but I'm not sure they've ever been better than number three. And, and honestly, I, 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 I'd be surprised coming out of this visit and what we've heard and, and talking to Terry and all of the reports and everything. I'd kind of be surprised if Oregon's any worse than number two right now. I think they're definitely in this recruitment. Um, I think that Texas to Oregon pipeline is very real. And, uh, you know, as we know, there's multiple coaches on this staff that Rashad Samples being one on the offensive side, uh, Coach Parks being another one, one of the assistants that have ties in this area. And so I think this is one that Oregon moved from maybe that four or five position, you know, up to maybe two or three and, and did what you want to do. You want to keep climbing the ladder. And Terry's like the others mentioned, he's going to be taking official visits in June. We don't know about a decision if that'll be something that he does at the end of June or, or July, but you know, these official visits are going to be crucial. It's going to be, there's going to be a lot of commitments coming off the board, you know, basically in the next six to eight weeks. doesn't mean they're all coming to Oregon. It just means a lot of these big names are going to be making choices. Which is an exciting time, Justin, right? I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, but it's just fun when there's a lot of commitments rolling around. It gives us plenty to talk about. Um, I don't think we ever talked about this because we weren't working together yet, but my God, February was so slow. I just felt like we were crawling through the dead period. It was it was tough, but it's a lot more fun when we got guys like Michael Terry to talk about. And here you see him taking some reps at running back. I mean, this guy can do just about everything. And I think Oregon's connections... 
in the state of San Antonio or in the city of San Antonio in particular with some of those guys you mentioned, of course, Stein, those play a big role here and they're continuing to get really, really quality offenses every single year. And I, I think that Terry's a guy that is always going to have a spot at Oregon. I don't know if that's a stretch, but he's, he's that level of a player. So um, great to get him on campus for his first visit to Eugene, I believe. So, you know, first visit, I think you try to make the best impression you possibly can and then get him back on campus for an official visit. But Oregon's offensive weapons are looking really good here in the 25 class. And um, if you can hold on to what you have and then bring in Michael Terry, you're looking at a really scary offensive recruiting slate. So the Ducks are doing well, and um, I think you're going to probably see them battling teams like Texas A&M. I think Nebraska is another one that's worth a mention for Michael Terry as well. But um yeah, you just you love getting a guy like this on campus, and and I think you like your chances with them moving forward. Yep, yeah, hundred percent. That visit was all about setting yourself up to get an official visit and getting another visit with him in the month of June, and really kind of positioning yourselves, you know, to finish strong there because um, this is an elite level guy, and and getting him would be a game changer for Oregon for sure. All right. Well, the last thing I have on Terry to add here, I mean. This has been an interesting recruitment to follow because he does do a little bit of everything. We've talked wide receiver. We've talked tight end. I was talking to one one person this weekend that that said like he's kind of like a Derrick Henry style of, of back. So we'll see, I mean, where he ultimately ends up. We're seeing some reps at quarterback here. I mean, what can't this guy do? Um, it's pretty insane. But he's going to be one of those fun recruits to follow here. And he's definitely one of those guys, I think, kind of in that ultimate 25. Uh, Justin, that I know you you like to – uh, produce over at scoop duck so just another reason to check us out so you guys know who to keep an eye on as we enter a really important stretch of the recruiting calendar here uh entering the, the summer justin let's uh let's jump ahead to the 2026 class a little bit because i had a, a pretty interesting interview with one of oregon's big biggest visitors and that's Folsom quarterback Ryder Lyons, who is one of the top names out West here in the in the 2026 cycle. One of my favorite quarterbacks to watch. I mean, he's incredibly creative, just insane arm talent. And he's always a great interview. And just to kind of kick this thing off, when I talked to him about his visit to Oregon this past weekend, he said that his relationship with Will Stein is, is one of the strongest he has with any coach in his recruitment. And, and this guy's got offers from coast to coast. Yeah, this is, again, you know, obviously with the visit, but again, even prior to that, this is a guy that Oregon, you know, heavily prioritized in the 2026 class. Again, he's talking about Coach Stein, so they definitely have a long relationship. Um, I believe off the top of my memory that he's the number 11 player in the country in, in uh, 2026 in the on three industry rankings. Uh, and, and I'm saying 11 overall, not the 11 quarterback. So this guy's an elite talent. Um, and like you said, he's got every offer. You know, I know you you spoke with him. You probably have a better feel there, but it, it certainly sounds like Oregon. I don't know. Maybe at this point you say Oregon might have the slight edge and might be the team to beat. Uh, again, he's going to take his time. He's 2026. No reason to make a decision in June or July or August or September. Um, but as we do know, quarterbacks tend to come off the board a little bit earlier than others. You know, so I could see Lions potentially – committed somewhere by the end of this calendar year whether that's oregon who knows what is you know what it'll look like for him um but i think you've said if you're oregon you've kind of set the bar and uh you know it'll kind of be interesting to see how his recruitment plays out i don't know that oregon get away with taking two quarterbacks in 2026 of course that totally depends on what happens with the rest of 2025 um and what could happen in the winter you know transfer window but right now i think you put this name as maybe one of the top three names on Oregon's early board and, and it might even be number one. Yeah. And I, I think Oregon is probably the leader in this recruitment. If I had to tell you right now, I mean, it's worth mentioning. He also took recent visits out to USC and BYU. And, and we always know that Lincoln Riley is going to be a top contender for elite quarterbacks. Um, his brother Walker Lyons is coming off of a mission trip and, and signed with the Trojans as part of their 2023 class. So you wonder how that maybe uh, impacts things, but, it was a cool dynamic. I think he said this weekend trip was kind of not like any other visit he's been on. He got to be in the film room with Will Stein and Achilles Smith Jr., Oregon's 2025 quarterback commit. So I think just being able to kind of lay the foundation there, like, hey, you know, you guys can get a relationship going and maybe you're working together 
to help the Ducks get better in, in the future. But I think you probably have Oregon and then USC. Um, but he is certainly one of the premier arm talents out West. And, and I, he's one of the best I've seen in person in the last year. You also have Jaden O'Neill at Harbor City Narbonne High School. He's a, a really, really improved passer. I love how he's developed over the course of this offseason. Looks faster, throws a great ball. And then also Brady Smigel at Newbury Park. So Will Stein's got his, uh, his choice of uh, quarterbacks to, to go after here in the 2026 class. What will make this one interesting as well, Justin, is if he takes a mission trip or not. I don't know if that's uh, on the table just yet. His brother did take one for 18 months, but I'm not exactly sure what Walker Lyons is going to do. But Duck fans have to keep an eye on Ryder Lyons to see what happens in his recruitment because they're in a really good spot. Yeah, and of course, his decision with his mission will will be a big deciding factor how Oregon pursues multiple quarterbacks in 2026. You know, if the obviously if he doesn't take a mission, you're probably one and done. If he does, you know, you kind of have to look at at some other options because this now becomes a, a 2028 or late 2027 type of a, of a recruit. So um, we'll be interesting to watch this unfold a little bit. I know it's early, um, but that's the name of the game. I mean, if, if folks are just kind of all honed in on 2025, Oregon's probably about to have half of its class or more committed in the next month or so of 2025. You're going to see a heavy shift to 2026 uh, in the fall because there's only going to be a handful of spots left to uh, you know, fill out in the fall for Oregon in 2025. So that's why we're talking about them now. And that's why you should be paying attention to them because uh, just in a few months from now, all of a sudden these guys will be on the clock just about, you know, that's just the, the nature of recruiting. And I think one of the things that just kind of resonated with me recently was just the caliber of guys that I'm interviewing as far as their recruiting rankings in 25 and 26 and Oregon's in a great spot for both of them between both classes. So I think you really see how they're set up for success for the long run, sustainable recruiting success uh, at, at Oregon. Justin, we've got a couple minutes left here. I'm going to throw you a little bit of a curveball. I don't think it's a huge one, but um, a lot of our readers and subscribers over at Scoop Duck, I feel like every day I see a post about it. What's going on with O-line recruiting? Uh, the Ducks were able to host a couple of big targets from um, Bishop Gorman over the weekend, I believe. And then they're also involved with Aaron Dunn out of the state of Utah. Michael Fasusi is another name out of Texas, but just wanted to wrap today's episode up with some of your thoughts on O-line recruiting. You know, I, I didn't post this and I probably should have. So I guess this will be a little nugget. I, I'm, I am not concerned about offensive line recruiting. I think Oregon, uh, you know, you mentioned Michael Fasusi. We've talked about Juan Gaston before. We've talked about some other, you know, top 100 offensive linemen that Oregon is in the game for. Uh, and and to your point, you mentioned the Bishop Gorman duo, Douglas Utu and SJ Alafatuli. There's two guys right there in Nevada, not far from where you're at in Oregon, and Aaron Dunn in Utah, which I think Oregon probably leads for Aaron Dunn if they want to, uh, if they do want to take him, which I, I certainly think that they do. If you can get two out of those three, and you could easily probably get all three, but if you could get two out of those three, I think you're kind of only looking for two more guys after that. Uh, if you're Oregon and the reason I say they do need to sign some guys and they need to get some bodies in there, but I will almost say this almost exclusively. I don't care who they sign in 2025 for offensive linemen or how many I can almost guarantee you they dip into the portal for offensive tackle in this off season. I mean, obviously we don't know what names will be in there. We don't know how recruiting will play out over the next six months, but I, and, and it's really hard to make guarantees in this business. You know that, I know that. But I would almost guarantee you Oregon dips into the transfer portal for at least one offensive tackle, possibly two, in the transfer portal window. Yes, they're expensive. Everybody knows that. There's usually not a ton of them. But if Oregon has the success that we think they do, sending Connor Lee uh, and Ajani Ajean, Cornelius to the NFL and they are early draft picks, they're going to have no problem – getting their pick of the litter at offensive tackle in the transfer portal. So that in a nutshell, I think, I think duck fans need to really take a step back and look at it in, in that regard. This is probably the one position that I would say, Hey, look, we really need to see the body of work they do at the prep level and at the transfer level for us to kind of judge what they do. Because I, I again, I, even if you get Michael Fasusi, who I believe is the number one offensive tackle in the country, 
okay, at the prep level. I still think you need at least one transfer portal offensive tackle and possibly two, probably two. So, you know, to me, this is going to kind of be based on that. And, you know, there's no way, you know, I'm sure Oregon knows that, you know, I'm sure Leak Terry knows that. And he's planning six months out saying, okay, I need to get three, four or five guys in this class, but I already know I'm going to need to hit the transfer portal uh, in the, in the winter when that, when that big portal window opens. And I'm sure Dan Landing's planning accordingly like that. So, they're not going to go sign six or offensive seven offensive linemen at the prep level and then go get two more in the transfer portal window. They can't take nine or 10 offensive linemen in this cycle alone. That's too many bodies. So I would assume that they're kind of going quality over quantity at the, at the prep level. And any of those guys that they get, they're going to, they're going to say, Hey, these are good caliber guys get a year of development and they're going to be in the rotation but we're going to have to get two, at least two ready-made guys ready to roll because that's a lot of production to replace out there. And Oregon will lose some interior guys too. So they've got a lot to replace after this year. Yeah, it's it's an evolving picture at, at offensive line, I think, for Oregon. And and I think the, the thing that people need to know, like if Oregon does look in the portal a little bit, I think they'll still be in good shape. And it's not like they're just going to discount high school recruiting completely. So wanted to get that quick update for you before we got out of here, Justin. Um, any, any final thoughts? I know you got to get out of here. No, no. Yeah. Uh, the life of recording videos and podcasts, but no, appreciate you and I getting this put together. You do a great job with this and we appreciate all the growth here on the YouTube channel and on scoop duck. We've seen a major surge of people joining with the addition of max and, and of course, Steve Wiltfong having something to do with that, but thank you guys for supporting us and keep spreading the word. That's the number one way that we grow is when you say hey man you see what they're doing at scoop duck or here check out their video it's awesome like when your friends ask you questions about who Oregon's recruiting or who the quarterback is or whatever, say hey go check out scoop duck these guys will answer all your questions and and we appreciate that but it, it definitely helps we definitely uh do answer those questions justin and i try to stay active on the message board so that's always fun interacting with you guys but yeah check us out at scoop duck only a dollar right now still got that promo going you can find more of justin on twitter slash x at j hopkins sd if you want to find more of me follow me on twitter instagram and facebook at m Taurus sports subscribe to the scoop duck youtube channel right here and um you can also share the show share the duck's dish podcast with your friends family and other duck fans but Thanks to Justin for stopping by. Thank you to you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast.